This is question five from paper 33 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that will bring you to my playlist that has all the solutions from the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image that, of this question, so you can try it before looking at this solution. This is a multi-part question that involves using the iterative formula to solve this equation, I guess. But just for part A, they'd like us to sketch two graphs that will show that this has exactly one root to it. So what they mean by that is they want us to graph both sides of this equals. So you can do that in maths very often. If we graph both sides of the equals, we see where they meet each other. And that would be the solution to an equation. So if we uh, let's go ahead and do this with a nice big graph here. First, we'll graph x cubed. Um, now, maybe the first thing I should do for x cubed is to show you this is yeah, let me show you a few ones here. y is equal to x, y is equal to x cubed, y is equal to x to the power of 5, y is equal to um, x to the power of 7. x1 is here, x to the power of 1. x to the cubed would look like this. Oh, go up a bit faster than that. Um, x to the power of 5 would look like this. x to the power of 7 would go even faster. They'd all look very similar. So I'm just going to draw x to the power of 5 looking like this, although it's probably a little narrower than that. <clears throat> a lot narrower, in fact, I would say. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and sketch 2 plus, 2 plus x. y is equal, well, let me write, rewrite that as x plus 2. Just the line. Um, it hits the y-intercept at 2. Put 2 in here. And uh, it has a slope of 1, although I've elongated the slope here, so it would actually look more like this in my drawing. This should be a little bit squeezed in, but it's fine for a sketch. Just need to tell them where this point is, and this point would be minus 2. But how do you know it didn't go down and hit it again here? So we, I, I'd just like to show the examiner you're thinking about that, and show them what this point here is. At x minus 2, what is this point here? Well, that is minus 2 to the power of 5. Put that in the calculator, you'll get, uh, I'm just doing it in my head, um, 32, or minus 32 in this case. And uh, yeah, mine, that doesn't look quite like minus 32. But uh, yeah, so minus 32, so this is a big gap here. There was a gap of 2, and now there's a gap of minus 32. If you drew it like this, it doesn't look the best, but it, it gets your point across. Um, but if you did know what was going to happen, you could draw it. I'll just draw it a bit more accurately this time. Um, it would come up very fast and go in like this. And this would come all the way down. Let's put a bit of more of a slope on it. And we look more like this. And we get this point down here. That's a bit more accurate. Although the first one I drew would have been fine for an exam. Just you want to put in your numbers. So that looks more like it. So if this is a gap of 2, and this is going down slowly, just a, a slope of 1, and this is going down faster and faster and faster, we now have a gap of 32 here. This, it's never going to hit it. It's never going to catch it. So th this would be enough information, putting these numbers in at least. All right, that is part A. Uh, for part B, let me, let me clear off some of this, and we'll do part B. Okay, for part 2, it's a... Lots of students had difficulty doing part two while they were able to do part C. It asks you to show that the sequence of values generated by this formula, so that you'll get like x1, x2, x3, x4 generated from this formula, and show that they converge uh, to the root of the equation in part one. And what they mean by that, the, the root of the first one would be x is equal to 2 plus x to the fifth root, I, I'm not sure, the quin root, I'm not sure how you say that, but um, two, to the power, 2 plus x to the power of 1 over 5. So this x will be the same as this x you get when, uh, when this converges, after you do this infinite times. So how do you do that? Really what they're asking, I'll change this equation back into uh, this one here, because they're equivalent. And what they're really asking is, is this equation the same as this one? And I can rewrite this one when I go to infinity. When I go to infinity, n plus 1 should be the same as n. There'll be no change. They'll have already converged. 
Uh, so if I rewrite this, x is equal to 4x to the power 5 plus 2 over 5 times x to the power 4 minus 1. They're asking, is this the same as this? Or show that this is the same as this one. That's what they're asking. Uh, and you can do that by playing with either one. Either one you want and make it look like the other one. I would suggest this one's a lot easier. It's just one or two lines, in fact. So we're just going to take the bottom one here and change it. Multiply across by here, we'll get x times this is 5x uh, to the power 5 minus x is equal to 4x to the power 5 plus 2. Um, let's get all the x to the power 5s on the left, just like what we're trying to make it look like. So we'll take this one across. 5 minus 4 is just 1x to the power 5. Take this one over this side is equal to x plus 2. And, and that's it. That's, we're finished. It was just that easy to show that this is equal to this. Um, there's, you might say, well, why are we using this? There's many other ways we could have done it. What was wrong with the one I made up? Um, x is equal to 2 plus x to the 1 over 5. What if we put n plus 1 here and n? Um, it's, not in our, it's not in the course, the scope to when these work and when they don't. When do they converge? When do they not? It, it revolves around taking the derivative of them, seeing what the, what's the absolute value of the slope is, and, and testing where it converges that way. Don't worry, it's not in the course. They'll always give us the formula to use, or they'll set up a formula that we just have to add the ends to it. And they'll always give us the guess. They give us a guess in part C, or nearly all. If, if the guess is important, they'll give us the first guess. Because sometimes you can pick a really bad guess. Like in this equation here, if we picked, if we picked x to be um, a number that would make the bottom row zero, I guess one over five to the power of one over four would make it zero. That'd be a bad guess because we'd never get an answer out. Uh, all right, do I need to rub? No, I don't need to rub anything out. We can do part C once. Well, I will take this away here. I don't need to rub anything out, and I went ahead and rubbed some now. All right, part C says to use this formula, use the iterative formula here. And put our first guess, x equals 1, uh, sorry, x1 equals 1.5. And then um, get the answer correct to three decimal places, but giving each iteration, because we're going to get many answers out here, uh, x3 and so on down, give each of them to five decimal places. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give it five decimal places and round it off to three, show you what it looks like. Now, at this point, we... You don't need to use a well. You need to use a calculator, but use a calculator smart. So lots of students do this question. Let's see. I did it earlier. It took me five of these, and lots of students would have done this formula on the calculator five times. Not impossible. Just take a few minutes, no problem. But you can save yourself a lot of time by using the calculator correctly. I'm uh, yeah. I'm gonna buy up a bit of information here. Form you la. I'm not. I don't know how to spell a formula. I don't, I don't think it really matters. Formula and answer here, all right. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use the calculator like this. I'm gonna write 1.5 equals. And now what that has done, that has put 1.5 in the calculator's memory as being the answer, the last answer it got. Now I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna do this formula here. I'm gonna do four, uh, let me write it out. Let me rub out a bit here and write it again down here. Because I'll write exactly what I'm going to put in the calculator. I'm going to put into the calculator, uh, bracket. I'm going to open a bracket to be careful, 4 multiplied by answer uh, plus 2. I'm going to close a bracket. I'm going to divide it by, I'll open another bracket to be careful here. Uh, 5 multiplied by answer, oops, answer should be to the power of 5. Answer to the power of 4, minus 1, close the bracket. And I'm going to press equals, which in calculator world we'll put it like this. That's going to be in the calculator here. I'll write that again up here. 4 times answer to the power of 5 plus 2 over 5 times answer to the power of 4 minus 1. There, you can read it more carefully here, but that's, that's got, well, when I finish what I'm about to do, that's going to be in the calculator's memory as the last formula I did. So I'm um, putting this in, uh, just bear with me while I do this. 
4 multiplied by answer to the power of 5. You know what, let's uh, edit this out. We'll jump back in 10 seconds when I finish this. Okay, I've typed this into the calculator, and now when I press equals, what's going to happen is the calculator is going to check what the previous answer was, and that was 1.5. And everywhere it has answer, it's going to put 1.5. So it will uh, spit out the answer here, 1.3316, and round it to 5, that's in places 2. And let's, let's round this off, this is, this is equal to 1.5. This is approximately equal to 1.33. Two, rounded to three. Seven, please. Now, what's great about doing it this way? It's a little slower at this point. Now, when I press equals again, the calculator checks. Well, what's the last formula I was doing? What does he want me to do again? Oh, he must want me just to do this again. So it's what I just put in. It's going to ask me just do that again for me. But instead of uh, when it looks up answer, instead of finding this one, it's going to find this one here. One point three three one six two. And it's going to give me this answer, 1.27352, uh, rounded off. Uh, what's this? Rounded off to 3 is 1.274. Um, and we stay doing this. We're just going to stay doing this until this answer converges to give us the same thing every time. And each time, now the calculator has updated this to 1.274. And I, I won't bother doing that every time, because I can just press an equals here. Uh, if I press equals another time, I get 1.26724. That's rounded off to 1.267. So we're not getting the same answer yet, but we're getting closer to some answer. We're converging, it seems to be, anyway. Um, the fifth guess equals again. 1.26717. <coughs> That's approximately 1.267, same answer. That, that's good enough for the examiner that we're quite sure now that this is, the, this is the correct answer. It's converged to here. You could go ahead if you want, just do another one, see what happens. Uh, 1.26717, yeah, it's in fact converged again. I wonder, did I forget to press it? No, it doesn't seem to be. It's still uh, the same answer. If you stayed going longer, you could go, well, we're, we're on, I, I've got the X7 in here, X8, X9, X10. That gap is, the calculator actually needs to work on it. X11. You can go um, as deep as you want. One of the powers of using a computer instead of a calculator would be um, that you could tell a computer just to stay going for a thousand times. And you'd get it more and more accurate each time. Um, and that, that's a real power of iteration, especially when it involves uh, programmable computers and stuff. All right, if you did just type this five times in a row, that's fine. Just uh, use this number, do it again. Use this number, do it again. Use this number, do it again. That's fine, you'll stay getting uh, hopefully the same answers. Right, I think that answers all of that. Yeah, it looks like it. If you have any follow-up questions about that, about using a calculator to do that, uh, about um, this formula here, this iteration formula, any of that, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.